John chapter 7, and towards the beginning of your Old Testament, Joshua chapter number 7. Now today I want to do something different, I want to do like a Bible study. My whole message has come from Joshua chapter number 7, we're going, we're going to go verse by verse, but we won't go in the same order, but I'm going to give you five lessons from Joshua chapter 7. So the title of the sermon today is called Five Lessons from Joshua chapter 7. Look at verse number 1, the Bible says, what is the first word, but... But the children of Israel committed the trespass in the accursed thing. Now, but is a conjunction, right? So we have to realize what precedes Joshua chapter 7. Now, in Joshua chapter 6, we know that God, you know, helped the children of Israel won the battle of Jericho, right? And right after that, you know, the Bible says, But the children of Israel committed a, tra- a trespass in the accursed thing. You know, that sometimes we, uh, our, our Christians, tend to fall is we, we tend to be tempted to sin right after victory in life. So the thing is, today I want to give you five lessons from Joshua chapter 7. Right after the victory in Jericho, and then the children of Israel, the Bible said they committed a trespass. Okay, notice, notice the next part. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zebdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took up the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord is kindled against the children of Israel. So we saw Achan, one man, took the accursed thing. So the first lesson uh, we can get from, from this chapter is, number one, personal sins will affect the group. Personal sins will affect the group. And this verse number one, the Bible says, the children of Israel, right, the whole group committed the trespass for Achan, one man, the son of Carmi, and then the Bible says, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So one man's sin can affect the whole group. Jump down to verse number 11. The Bible says, Israel, the whole nation, Israel, has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken up the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel, the whole group, could not stand before their enemy. That's why they fought. That's why they were defeated in the battle of Ai. But, say, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Notice that one man, Achan, he took the accursed thing. You know, later we know in context, I believe it's talking about the sin of idolatry that caused him to worship a, another god. We know the context that took, he, 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 has, he has taken a Babylonian uh, something, some idols uh, uh, from, 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 from the Babylonian stuff. I don't know what that is, but no, we, I believe it's a sin of idolatry. Jump down to verse number 24. So we, so we see at the end of the story, after uh, the defeat of Ai, after Achan has been accursed, the Bible says in verse 25, uh, verse 24, And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold. What's the next phrase? And his sons, and his daughters, you know, and his oxen, and his asses, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Acre. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned them with stones. Notice that one man, Achan's sin, notice what's the consequence. The whole Israel, they were accursed, and his sons and daughters and everything he has, they were stoned, they were burned. And they, were, they, were punished for, they, were, they were punished by death penalty because they have, Achan has committed a sin you know, of idolatry, causing people to worship Another God. So number one, we have to realize that personal sins can affect the whole group. You know, that's number two. I want you to realize that sometimes bad things happen as a punishment of God. Something, some, sometimes bad things happen as a punishment of God. Now, now, not everything, not every trials, no, not every bad things happen as a trial. Sometimes God will give you trial. Sometimes God will allow some bad things happen in your life. Not because you have sinned, but God wants you to be a testimony among believers. Sometimes bad things happen, you have to ask yourself, are you a Job? You know, are you a Job? Is it a trial? But we have to tell ourselves, most of the time, it is a punishment of God. Because the Bible gave us an a, a unchangeable principle of sowing and reaping. You will always reap what you sow, and you will always reap more than you sow. Okay, verse number 2, Joshua 7, verse number 2. Joshua 7, verse number 2. So, 
after Achan had took the accursed thing, the Bible says in verse number 2, and Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is the site Beth Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and build the country. And the men went up and built Ai, and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three hundred men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to uh, to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up there of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai, and the men of Ai smote them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shabarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. So we saw the defeat. For one man's sin. So why were they defeated? Why were uh, the, the, the battle of Ai, why, were, why did children of Israel, they, they, they lost the battle? The Bible gave us the answer in verse number 12. The Bible says, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed, neither will I be with you anymore. Here is the Lord God speaking. I won't be with you anymore because you are accursed, except you destroy the curse from among you. So we see, in, 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 in this case, the bad things happen. They suffer defeat. Not because that's a trial, not because they have not sinned, God just wants to use that as a testimony, but because they've done something wrong. They've committed trespass, so God gives you a punishment. Go to the, uh, go to the uh, book of... Um, no, okay, don't go anywhere. So, because no, the Bible says, the Bible says, because they were cursed, that's why God is going to punish you. Sometimes we ha- we have heard so many positive sermons. You no, know, every every bad things happen. You no, know, God has a plan. It's true. God God does has a plan. But we have to realize that sometimes bad things happen because we have done something wrong. Because we need to get rid of the, uh, get rid of the sins in our life. Because not everything, not every bad thing is a trial. You know, sometimes. Bad things happen in your life. Maybe it not, it's not because of the sin you've committed. Maybe someone else did affect you. You know, leaders, you no know, fathers, if you do something wrong, it will affect your wife, it will affect your children. If pastor messes up his life, he's going to drag the whole church down with him. Sometimes we have to realize that one man's sin can affect the whole group. You know, sometimes you no know, God will punish you. You know, if, if, especially if you are saved. God said, I will surely chastise his children. God will chastise every single son whom he receive it, which means every son of God has sinned. That's why he chastised people, you know. So, you know, we know that in, in, in the passage, in, in another book, the Bible says, the Bible asks us to, to choose life. You know, God has laid us, you know, the Bible says, I have said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. If you are doing something wrong, if you are sinning before God, he's going to send you curse. You know, you know the passage, the Bible lists a bunch of blessing and a lot of cursings. You know, sometimes we, we, we tend to expect to receive blessing from God, but if you are not living according to God's way, He's going to send you cursing. Not because He doesn't like you, but He wants you to change. He wants you to reform, to conform to the image of His Son. You know, and, and some people say, you know, everything will work together for good in the end. Well, that's not the whole picture, if you love God. <laughs> now, not everything will work, work together for good. Everything will work together for good, only if you love God, only if you get rid of a sin in your life. See, sometimes bad things happen, you think it'll, it'll, it'll be good. But you have to get rid of your sins first. You have to get rid of God first. You know, see, the Bible says all things uh, work together for good to them that love God. Don't miss the last, the last phrase. Now, don't be so positive. You know, everything is like, like Joe Austin always put on that smile with the white teeth. But anyway, so, nothing like it. No. So we know the first lesson, you know, sometimes one man's sin can affect the whole group. Lesson number two, we know uh, that sometimes bad things happen as a punishment of God because you've done something wrong. You know, we have to examine ourselves. We have to die daily to seek, to draw closer to God. Lesson number three, actions are better than words. Actions are better than words. That's a really, really simple principle, but I want you to see that, 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 that kind of lesson applied to, to this chapter, verse number 6. So, after the defeat of the battle of Ai, verse number 6, and Joshua ran his cloak, he's mad, and fell, no, he's not mad, he's, he's sad, you know, and he fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide, but be he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. So he's mourning, you know, he's trying to ask him God, uh, verse number 7, and Joshua said, Allah, O Lord God, Wherefore, why hast thou 
at all brought his people over Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan? O Lord, what shall I say? When Israel turned their backs before their enemies, for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of, of the land shall bear, shall hear of it, and shall environ, environ means surround, shall, shall environ us around to cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? So Joshua and the and whole elders, they are mourning. They are, they are asking God, why do you let that happen? Notice the answer of God in verse number 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore? Why liest thou thus upon thy face? So here's God God God's saying to Joshua. What are you praying about? Deal with sins. You are the leader, okay? Take action. No. God, no, I'm not saying don't pray. The thing is, you can't just pray without no action. You have to put your action. You have to walk your talk. You know? So here's God telling Joshua. Why have you lies upon thy face, you know, complaining about this, asking about this? Just deal with sins. Now, God wants you to take action uh, with your sins immediately, okay? Now, we know that in context, Achan has committed a sin that is unto death. That's why God says, except you take away, except you stone them, then I will turn his anger from you in the later part of the chapter. I was in 1 John 5, verse 16. If any, if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask. And she shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Sometimes we, we, we are so uh, into prayer. I'm not saying don't pray. You know, if someone has commit, committed a sin unto death, someone has murdered someone, I want him to be saved, but, but his sin still needs to be punished. You know, because we, we, we realize that you know, we reap what we sow. Look at verse number 13 of Joshua chapter number 7. The Bible says, Up, sanctify thy people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, for thus is the Lord God of Israel. There is an accursed thing in the midst of you, O Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the, the accursed thing from among you. So, so at first, you know, uh, the Lord is talking to Joshua, you know, why just lie upon your face, take action. You, know, you have to take that sin away from you. You have to take away the accursed thing from you. Verse number 14 through 15 is it, it, God speaking then to, to actually pick up the man, you know, to find out you know, who, who exactly caused the whole children of Israel to be defiled. So we saw uh, the, the third lesson, actions are better than words. I'm not saying don't pray, I'm saying you should walk your talk. You know, so if you, that, that's what the Bible is saying, right? You know, God is telling Joshua, you know, don't just pray, don't just lie, uh, lie your face upon the ground, actually take actions. Leaders take actions. You know, if you see something wrong, fix that immediately. You know, husband and wife see something wrong, fix that immediately. You know, pastor see something wrong in the church, fix it immediately. Because, you know, God's anger is upon you. You know, sometimes the whole nation is accursed because one leader is not doing his job. Lesson number four. That's a, that's a controversial one. Lesson number four. Jesus Christ paid for our spiritual death, not our physical death. Jesus paid for our spiritual death, not our physical death. Verse number 16. So Joshua did what God told him to do. Verse number 16. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes and then the tribe of Judah was taken, and he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites by man, and Zadai was taken, and he brought his household men by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zadai, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. So Joshua identified what's the source, you know, who took the accursed thing. Verse number 19, notice that, and Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, Glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. Notice that Achan confessed. Achan repented. Well, well, I, I actually did about not say that word for word, but you know, we know that Achan did make a confession for the sin he's committed. You know, he's saying, he I've sinned against the Lord God of Israel. Notice that verse number 22. 
So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent. Behold, it was hid in his tent. So, so Achan tell, told Joshua where did he hide this, this accursed thing. But notice that verse number 24. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and silver and garment and wedge of gold, and his sons and daughters, and his oxen, his asses, his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them unto the valley of Acre. We know that in verse 25, you know, they were stoned, they were burned with fire. So, so we, we saw the picture, you know, Achan, he confessed. Achan, he, he told Joshua, you know, I'm wrong, I, indeed I've sinned against God, but, but he, still, he, he was still put to death. Physically. The, the thing is, we have, we have to understand, that penalty is still in effect, even after confession and repentance. The thing is, if someone had murdered someone, you know, I, I, would, I would love him to be saved spiritually, but he might still be put to death physically. Because we reap what we sow. It's not unloving, because the Bible gave us a clear principle. We have to, we earn what we, what we deserve. You know, we go to work, we earn the money, we provide for our family. If, if we do something wrong, as a child of God, will reap more than we sow. And in this case, one man, the father, is sinned. Notice what's the end of, of his family. His sons, his daughters, they were stoned. You, you ask me, why is God so cruel? You know, to be, to be honest, sometimes in the Bible, some cruel things happen in the Bible, I have no idea why, but we have to trust it by faith. You know, God has a reason to put these commands in the Bible. In fact, Bible says in, uh, in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 13, the Bible says that you know, if, you, if you have something, I have to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse number 6. Deuteronomy 13, verse number 6. I believe this, this passage explains why God is so, uh, is so mad you know, at Achan and his family and the children of Israel. Uh, Deuteronomy 13, verse number 6. The Bible says, If thy brother, son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friends, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly. Notice, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy father, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth, thou shalt not consent unto him. Which means you should not agree with him, nor hearken, don't listen unto him, neither shall thine eye pity him. You know, neither shall thy... Spare him, don't make exceptions, neither sh shalt thou conceal him, don't hide his sins. Notice verse number 9, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thy hand shall be first upon him that put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. Isn't that what happened in John chapter 7? You know, you know that they first laid hands on, on Achan, stoned him, and all the people of, all of Israel, you know, they stoned him with stones. Because why? Because why? Because he has convinced, his motive is to convince, uh, he, he wants to take the whole family down with him. And that's why God punished him so severely. Go to Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We know that God is just God, you know, he, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, but if someone commits theft, he needs to pay, pay back. And if someone take life, he has to take, he has to pay life for life. And I'm not saying we should not share the gospel with him, in fact, Murderers can be saved. Murderers can be saved. You know, I believe some serial killer can be saved. You know, we should always attempt to share the gospel with them, but they might still be put in prison, and I still get what they deserve because we know that God is just God. He might, he might, he might, he might go to heaven for eternity, but he might suffer some punishment on this earth. We have to realize that Jesus Christ died for our spiritual death, not our physical death. That's why the Bible lay out all the death penalty in the Bible for a reason. Okay. Now, Hebrews 10, verse number 28, the Bible says, He that despised Moses' law died without mercy. Isn't that what we find in John chapter 7? Without mercy, under two or three witnesses. Notice verse number 29. It's very interesting. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who had trodden underfoot the Son of God and, and, and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified in the own holy thing, and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. Now the thing is, some people may think, God of the Old Testament is, is, is angry, is more vengeful, but according to this passage, it, it, it seems to tell a different story. Well, that was verse 29. How much sore punishment suppose ye? How much worse, you know? How, how much severe punishment suppose ye? You know, he, he, at Moses' day, they died without mercy. And now, 
you know, how much worse punishment you, New Testament Christians, you are saved under grace, and you're still going out to, to enter the defiled thing, to take the accursed thing. You know, how much sort of punishment supposed to be going to have? See, God, God, Jesus Christ, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God will not change. It's the same God in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Right. Now, if, if you think God in the Old Testament is, is way vengeful, have more wrath, you haven't read the book of Revelation. All right, so <laughs> we have to know that God is the same God. You know, the Bible says, how much sore? It's going to punish you more because you are saved under grace. You know, God, Jesus Christ, saved you so you would not be a servant to sin. You know, that's what freedom in Christ means. We have, we have the freedom to refrain, to stop sin so we can walk in the Spirit, right? And notice verse number 30, uh, Hebrews Hebrew 10, verse number 30. For we know him that had said, Vengeance belongs unto me, our recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge whose people? His people, which means say Christian. And I'll say it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. That verse in contact is talking to the Christians. You can say forever, but once they always say, but if you mess up the lie, he will surely chastise you. Because he's a loving father, amen? amen. Now, go to, go to Romans 13, Romans chapter 13, how will watch my time. Ten more minutes, good. So, we saw the, the, the fourth lesson, Jesus Christ died for our spiritual death, not our visible death. Now, I'm not, taking, I'm not saying we should carry out the death penalty. You know, God ordained the civil government to do that, okay? Because, because the commandment said, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder, right? Now, Romans 13, verse number 1, the Bible says, Let every soul, let every body, Romans 13, verse 1, Let every soul be subject, be submissive, you know, unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God, which means all the higher powers are ordained by God. Whether it's church, your government, your family is ordained by God for a reason. Whosoever, verse number two, whosoever therefore resisted, fight against the power, resist the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall, re shall receive to themselves damnation, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil, without them not be afraid of the power, do that which is good, and I shall have praise of the same. Mm -hmm. Notice verse number four. For he is the minister of God to me for good. Talking about the civil government. It's, it's, he's, put, he's put there for your good. Why? But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. Mm -hmm. Why should you be afraid? For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he, the government, is the minister of God, the revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Now, what do you use a sword for? A, a, a beating? A spanking? No, a sword is used for killing. But also the job of the civil government is to execute wrath upon the evildoers. So God ordained our government to put that penalty so we can have a just society. And it's not God's being cruel, God's being loving. You know, God, Jesus Christ died for you. You can be saved yes. for, forever. But you reap what you sow. And sometimes your sin may affect other people. You know, the Bible says you, you don't have to turn there. Go back to Joshua 7. I'll finish that up. First uh, Peter chapter 2, verse number. 14, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. So, Bible talking to the governors is sent by God for the punishment of evildoers. So, we are not supposed to carry out God's vengeance, you know, God ordained his certain uh, authorities, okay? So the, so, the last lesson, that's number five. In order for God to turn from his anger, we have to get rid of our sins. In order for God to turn from His anger, we have to get rid of our sins. So we saw in, the, in John, John 7, 7, we saw Achan was stoned, his son, his daughters, they were dead. Notice verse number 26. And they, and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So, after that, so the Lord turned from the fierceness of His anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Acre unto this day. So after Achan was killed, and then God turned his anger. So it's not a coincidence. So how can we apply to our life in order for God to not be mad at you? In order for everything to work together for good, you have to turn from your sin daily. Good. You have to die daily, bear the cross daily. I and mean, that's the pattern in the whole Bible. You know, in 
Rehoboam, he humbled himself and then God turned from his anger. You know, in the book of Ezra, you know, because they have taken all the strange hidden wives, God says, I will not turn from my anger from you unless you put away your hidden wives. So it's a pattern in the Bible. In order for God to really spare you, you have to get rid of your sin. Eight minutes, okay? So isn't that, isn't that what the gospel is about? Isn't that what the gospel is about? Go, go, to, go to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah 53. So, so, so we learned five lessons. One man's sin kind of fed the whole group. Lesson number two, sometimes bad things happen as a punishment of God. Not because you have not sinned, because not everyone is a Job. Maybe you are a Jonah. You know, you have to think about stuff. Are you a Job? Are you a Jonah? Most of the case, there's sins in our life. We have to get rid of our sin. And then everything will work together for good. Lesson number three, actions are better than words. I'm not saying don't pray. In fact, we should pray without ceasing. But we should also walk our talk, put our action to really you know, put our words into action. That's number four. Jesus Christ died for, for our spiritual death, not our physical death. We have to realize that some people, they, 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 they deserve what, what they earn. You know? That's number five. In order for God to turn from His anger, we have to get rid of our sin. There, the anger of the Lord has to be appeased. You know, if, if we sin, God's going to punish you. That, that's, the, that's the unchangeable principle of the sowing and reaping. But that's what the gospel is all about. You know, we deserve to go to hell. You know, we get the punishment. You know, God is angry with the wicked every day. You know, and that's what Jesus Christ did on the cross. The Bible says that whom God had sent forth to give propitiation through faith in His blood. The word propitiation means the atonement, the sacrifice. He is the mediator. He sacrifice for us, so God's not no mad at us, talking about and we have a regenerated spirit. Isaiah 53, verse number 10. Isaiah 53, verse number 10. Yet, yet, please, notice that, yet please the Lord to bruise him, bruise Jesus, he had put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Notice that, yet please, Please, God the Father, who bruised Jesus, because our sin has to be paid. You know, it's like it's like the, the story of Achan. Right after Achan and his son and daughter were stoned, they were burned with fire, and then God turned away from his anger. And then we saw in chapter eight, they won the battle of Ai. God said, "I have given them. Uh, I have given you the, the. I have given you the glorious victory." And God, God claimed victory before the battle has even started. Yeah. If you if you have God work on your side, and that that's the gospel, really. If you can apply, you can apply every single chapter with the gospel. Jesus Christ, you know, He appeased, He sacrificed, He is the propitiation for our sins, so that God won't pour out His wrath, He won't send us to hell forever, because it pleased God to bruise sin. So we have to realize the five lessons we we've learned, and then go to Judges chapter eight. Let's see the last verse. Judges chapter eight, verse number one. I'm almost done. I have five more minutes. So, uh, I so we saw the first lesson. Personal sins will affect the, group, the whole group. So leaders, pay attention. You know, you know, fathers, be careful of, 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 what, of what you do to affect your wife or family. Pastors, the whole church. Even, 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 even if you have brothers and sisters, you know, just, just, what, just what about your siblings? What about people who are following you? How much bad things happen? can be a punishment of God. And the only way to work things for good is to get rid of those sin. Don't get overly positive, you know, it's gonna be good no matter what. Get rid of sin first. Otherwise God is mad at you. God's mad at with the wicked every day, okay? Now number three, actions are better than words. It's better to be doers you know, of the word rather than the hearer of the word. That's number five. We have to realize that God ordained the civil government for a reason, for our good. You know, to punish the evildoers. That's number five. In order for God to turn from His anger, we have to get rid of our sin. Last, last, last verse, Joshua 8, verse number 1. Joshua 8, verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of, of war with thee, and arise, go up to Ai, see. Notice the next phrase. I have given into thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. See, right after he did get rid of their sins, in the whole tribe, they have taken away the accursed, the idols in your heart, and then God has given you the victory. And we cannot have the victories in Christ until we have dealt with our sin. And there you have it, the five lessons from Joshua chapter 7. Let's pray.